So Internet of Shit is a very famous Twitter account. Uh, previously, uh, uh, Twitter now it's called X. It's we shouldn't use it anymore, but uh, you can see half a million followers. Um, and they are very like their main thing was that they would uh, post pictures of devices that failed, um, where the so-called smart things, yeah, um, no stop working, yeah, or uh, have really bad UX. Uh, I think this is what they very often complain about, either that in, in the worst moments of of time, it would first require a firmware update um, or yeah, become unusable. Um, uh, so you can still look uh, at a lot of the posts in there. <laughs> they are sometimes very funny. Uh, I've I've used that in in a few talks. We we shouldn't end up at Internet of Shit, but uh, the, the, there's a real even that since it uses swear words, um, there is uh, so much good stuff here. So if you if you are bored, then I, I kind of encourage you this account. Go through this account and look at some of the the weird things that they are sharing. Um, it's always a good tell tale of um, sometimes very useless products but mostly it should serve as a tale that uh, when we build for the internet of things um, we must make sure that there is no reason why one of our chips should end up on internet of shit and that is must be true for for all nordic products meaning that what we put out there should be as safe as possible uh, uh, it's you cannot be perfectly safe. We, we saw that two years ago with App Protect. There will be companies who can break or, 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 or glitch our chips, um, but that will cost, for instance, a few thousand dollars per device to break one individual device. Um, so that would be an attack, like any attack is possible uh, for any system, but it comes at a cost. And we definitely should, with everything we do, and that's the software and the cloud part, make sure that we make it as expensive as possible for an attacker to gain access into an individual device or into, ideally, they should not gain access into our cloud systems at all. Um, but with keeping that in mind, it's like what will happen is if something happens to devices that we ship like the thingies or that our customers build using our nordic chip then if something bad happens we will end up somewhere on the internet and somebody will ridicule us and then uh that is bad pr there's no way to like there's no good pr and especially if if you're a chip manufacturer and um we like it, it establishes itself that our products are not safe, um, then no customer will start building with it. Uh, and if something happens to a customer product, I mean, this is beyond our control, um, we at least have to make sure that we can truly honestly say that we told the customer the safe way to do it. If they decide to pick an unsecure way, an unsafe way, like have default passwords on their devices or don't use authentication against their own cloud, that's beyond our own control. But in our examples that we put out, we have always have to use the, the best practice. And that really means like no hard-coded passwords in the source code. But this is a good example where sometimes you have to start with really a simple setup without security because security is typically only gets a, in, in the way of, of the user understanding what they want to do. And if we do that, then there should be a big, big, big disclaimer that says, well, uh, you shouldn't do this in production. But that should, there should be a rare exception. It's not like that. If we have an example like where we wouldn't use security, 
and say, well, this is unsecure, unencrypted, whatever. And it has a disclaimer that we must produce a secure example alongside. Like we cannot just say, hey, uh, we gave you this bad example and told you not to use it. We must also share uh, a good example um, because then we can at least claim for for us and for, for Nordic that we did our best effort to educate the customer on what is the best and most secure way to yeah, secure your infrastructure and from the device to the cloud and back. That's this mantra uh, behind Internet of Shit when it comes to security. But then, of course, Internet of Shit is very good at pointing out some of the absurd uh, like usability flaws that IoT products have. What, what did I see here? The faucet was turning on when he used his radio. So this is a touch activated faucet. Yeah, and he uses the ham radio device now and he presses the transmit button and the faucet works. Yeah, that's kind of a glitch or, or unintended behavior. Um, I think this is this is much beyond what we can do. We got we provide the chip in there. We don't control what how what they build around it, how they activate the faucet, what causes the faucet to to turn on. Um, but I think when it comes to uh, to stuff like how to deliver firmware updates, we at least kind of should consider this. Um, and 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 when we build a sample for instance, that delivers firmware updates, uh, don't build a sample that in a way that every every week at 12 o'clock uh, Oslo time, we send firmware updates. Like you, you, if you upload one, it gets automatically deployed uh, without control. Yeah? And that would be a bad decision. Um, so we really should consider um, also, when it comes to cloud solutions, okay, is this firmware update solution that we're building able to to allow the customer to decide when they want to ship folder updates? Uh, um, and yes, our like our tech uh, is is driven by the device, so the firmware client on the device will decide when it's time to do a folder, and that allows the customer to build in some uh, logic there. They could see, okay, this device is now used, or they could have uh, even local data and know, okay, this is my local time. And typically in the afternoon, this device is getting used. So maybe I shouldn't request a folder now. Um, but that's kind of a bit of the uh, another aspect that we, we should think about when we build something, how is this maybe going to get used in, in the end product? And are we adding too much limitations on how it can be configured by the end user. We shouldn't ignore usability and and think always think with the user in mind, um, because the end user uh, is maybe a developer. But we should need to give our customers, which are developers, a good example on how to build uh, IoT devices that just work nicely and and behave nicely.